bad. When you want gorgeous, you tune into Dan Miller. That's how things get done. (laughs) Dan got the memo about the tree in the background, too. Good on you, buddy. (laughs) Yeah, you thank the wife for that. I just, she, uh, day after Thanksgiving every year, she knows I set it up and she takes it from there. That's that's the story at our house too. That's <laughs> I, uh, my job. Yeah. I, I don't even ask because I know if I do it ahead of being asked, I'll score a couple points. That's right. That's right. And then they're not having to do all that stuff because that's. I mean, I, I call it the museum. Everything else is her. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's the museum. It's got to be. You know, the curator has to do the thing. So, how are you, Dan? So great to see you again. It's been just a little bit. Hey. Great to see you guys. Appreciate what you guys do here. And uh, this is always a, a terrific event. You're doing it for the right reasons. And appreciate what you guys do all year. Well, yeah, thanks, thanks for making time. Yeah. You always yeah. We just so had well. Tom Kennedy on. So you have somewhat big shoes to follow here. Um, Tom, Tom was great. Tom, as, as you know, did his Mike Claus, Mike Cleats for St. Jude's uh, and, and explained why he did that. So that was uh, that was fun. So uh, I'll, I'll, can I, I'm going to ask you the question that I asked him. How weird is it that all the wide receiver room is healthy now, and how good is that to watch? <laughs> you know, it, it almost feels like team-wide. It just feels like, you know, and Dan Campbell said it last week, where they're kind of getting healthier, other teams are kind of fading a little bit. So I, I think it's great. I think it's certainly, um, in particular, seeing Jamison come back, he's going to get a heavier load this week. I don't know what that means, but – um, yeah, we saw how kind of things bogged down a little bit when Shark wasn't right, when Reynolds wasn't right, and they had to kind of find a way through those middle games. And then to see last week when you can see how Shark opens up the field, still don't know if Reynolds is 100%, but it just, look, health makes a difference, guys. I mean, I know in this league you got to get going either way, but health certainly allows you to at least envision the vision that you, or at least, you know, fulfill the vision you had for a particular room at the beginning of the year. I have to say, Dan, I think universally people think that whoever's idea it was to put the camera in the radio booth this year to get your plays of the game deserves a raise and a promotion beyond beyond any they've seen before. It is spectacular. I mean, we've seen you work. You know, some of us have some, – some people are just completely unfamiliar with it. But with your spotters and all the folks up there helping out, it really – I mean, it's amazing to watch. It's like a, just a, a perfectly tuned machine, the group of you working. And then the energy, not just – like a guy with a headset on watching the game and calling it, but you're up, you're moving, your your body is into this. It is so, you know, it's already energetic to hear you on the radio, but then to see it, it's it's almost, you know, I would rather watch the game and have you in the bottom corner in like a pop out window just to watch you call the game. That would be that would be spectacular. That's somebody does that. It's better than a Manning cast to me. Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure you get kind of sick of it after a while, but I, I think that. Uh... No, look, it's been interesting for me, too, because I knew I moved around up there. I wasn't really sure what it looked like. I've told people I I know that I get into it and move my hands and things like that because there's a couple times where I've thought that I've broken my finger (laughs) because in in good (laughs) moments and bad moments, I will, uh, as I'm making the call, I'll pound the desk. And again, it can be good or bad. And then I'll, like, stop talking and Lomas will talk or Brandy will talk or back in the day or whatever – then it'll be like, I feel this throbbing in my hand and I'm like, Oh no, did I break my finger? And uh, so, yeah, definitely know that I move around, but look, you touched on it too. Um, I'm the, the thing that I'm really happy about with these videos. Number one, the reception has been unbelievable, but that's lions fans. They're, they're just the best. They have made me feel nothing but welcome, appreciated and part of the team since I started this 18 years ago. But um, just that people get to see that, that I'm not the only one up there and Lomas isn't the only one up there that I have, we have the most amazing team. I, I will say it flat out. I, I think of anybody in the league, Al Rosenberg, our engineer is the number one sports play by play engineer in radio. That's not even up for debate, but he's not working for us. He's doing the world series or the NBA championship or NFL playoffs and super bowl. I mean, he's just, he is the best in the country. And then Joe Abramson, has been by George Blaha's side for 30 some years, maybe 40. I don't even know. Joe started when he was like 15 or 16 um, and does national stuff. And Mike Bratta, same thing. Mike does a ton of national stuff. So I'm just blessed to have those guys. I've been with Joe for 23 years. I've been with Mike for all 18 years. I've been with the Lions. And I always say they're my right and left arms. I mean, they are Every every call that I have and every game that I have, 
they're a massive part of. Um, and, and, I'm, and, and if there's one thing that I'm really, really happy about with this, it's that people get to see them and how important they are to what we do. Yeah. So lo, you get animated, obviously. Um, does it ever scare you that Loma is a small man? So, oh, you broke up. Yeah, there. no, Loma. <laughs> I, I you, you froze for a second there, but Loma Snow, he's he's a little more laid back than me. But you know what's interesting is that you find with Loma, and you can see it sometimes in these videos, is his knowledge and vision is so much ahead of mine. Just because, and and I've found this with every ex player that I've worked with, they've watched tape for so long that they can almost tell the moment they go to the line of scrimmage that this play is going to work. And then as they see it develop, he's ahead of where I am in recognizing success or failure. So oftentimes where I'm making the call, I mean, you go back to Amon Ra's touchdown last year against the Vikings. Lomas was ahead of me. Lomas had a yes out when the ball was barely out of Jared's hands. I mean, he knew right away just by having seen it so many times that it was going to be a success. So it's uh, Lomas is, is kind of just laid back. He doesn't jump around a lot, but he has such great recognition of what's going to happen. And I sometimes don't even hear it until I go back and listen to the game again. And then it's like, oh, man, he knew that was good before it even happened. And that's why, you know, sometimes and quarterbacks say it all the time. They come to the line, they'll look at the defense, and they'll say, I, we knew based on that defense that we had seen before that this play is going to be a success. And it's if you listen closely to Lomas, you, you can hear it as the play develops, whether or not it's going to be successful sometimes. that's I've spent a lot of time in the last six months like doing films, studying how to read defense, all that. And I mean, I'm, I'm countless hours, hundreds of hours starting, really trying to get kind of immersed in that. And they come up to the line, and I'm like, okay, so we're too high snap. Like, I, I'm like, so, I mean, how fast yeah. these guys can do these reads? And I don't know that they get credit for it. When you start looking at what's going on in the field and how they're adjusting and, 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 and watching how the defense reacts, it's incredible the chess game that goes on and how immediate it happens. It's, it's, it is, it's really something to see. Well, they get, they get a look they like. And if they get the look they like and run the play they know will work against that look, um it is uh, yeah you're right it's it's uncanny I've, I've been around it for a long long time and had coaches and players tell me about you know going to the line and they knew right away and it's 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 just tells you the you know knowledge these guys have and the work that they do to get prepared for a game and it's also the repetition of these guys having done it for so many years and watched tape for so long that they understand what will work and what won't work and how sometimes they'll come to the line and be like, you know, this, this may not go so well. Uh, and you got to figure a way out of it. Alert, alert. Um, let's <laughs> really quick. Um, how does the current energy around the team com uh, compare to other teams historically that you've been on the call for? This is from BDR Fab in the chat. Yeah, it's, it's really special. And look, we've seen it before. I mean, the 2014 team had it. That was a really good team. They believed in themselves, but you know, I, I, I can just, say from this year um the beginning of the year when you're one and six and i even asked coach and, and deuce about it today um from when they were one and six to where they are right now it's just night and day i mean when you know that if you play well you're gonna win that that's that's different and it doesn't guarantee you anything but there's just a difference in understanding that the things that you do work and the, the work that you're putting in has a payoff at the end of it. When you're one and six or last year, you're zero and eight or zero and nine or whatever they were, or oh nine and one. And, and you're still working your tail off and you're not getting the results. It's hard to have that kind of confidence and belief, but these guys now are, are really starting to have that. And you can sense it when you talk to the players and man, that's what winning is. That's, that's what winning in any sport is. And, and it's the belief that what you're doing, uh, even if you get in a tough spot during a game, you're going to find a way out of it. So the answer to the question is, it's an awesome vibe out there right now. Um, and that's what you're looking for. It doesn't guarantee that you'll win on Sunday, but it gives you the best possible chance. And it gives you the best chance to endure some of the crap that might come your way along the way. If you have a bad play early or you have a, uh, something that goes south and all of a sudden you look up and the scoreboard's not going your way, there's just a belief that you can still get it done. And, and that's a byproduct of winning Winning brings confidence, and, and these guys feel good about where they are right now. Yeah, and I, I want to – you don't get to call blowouts on the positive side very often. What was it like to 
be a, up by that much and to have victory formations like that that you, that changes how you have to broadcast the game in a way that's a little bit difficult isn't it to because you're not it's, you know, people are it's, looking it's, for different things at that point yeah it's better for my stress level i mean i can tell you that it's, <laughs> it's, it's much easier to deal with in terms of of like that game i think jeff that there's still because we've been through so many things, even when it's 30 to 14, you're thinking, okay, that's, that's eight and eight. There's still two scores down. And you're still thinking, oh man, you know, let, let, let's get further up. And that's why, you know, when they kick a field goal to go up three scores, you're like, okay, we can breathe a little bit now. But, you know, a couple of times this year, they have actually gotten into victory formation. And that has been really cool. And, and, it, and it's nice, but it's, um, you know, go back to last night. And, and what happened in that game, you know, I tweeted it when it was 16 to three. They're letting these guys hang around. And sure enough, the Raiders blew it. The Rams come back and win. You have to finish teams in this league. And, and there's not a lot of getting comfortable until it's really almost mathematically impossible due to time and score for somebody to come back. But, yeah, it, it, it was better. It's fun to see. I think the players love it. You can tell that they kind of just revel in the ability to go out there and keep piling it on and keep piling it on. And you saw that against Jacksonville and you saw some of that against the Giants. Um, but I, look, I'm still like probably many, many Lions fans, a little bit skittish when you get to that part of a game and we've seen things fall apart before. So part of their growth is our growth. Part of them being able to finish games is us realizing and trusting that they can finish games. And that's that's kind of what everybody's going through right now. That's We've been talking about that. And not only does the team have to learn how to win, but the fans have to learn how to win too. And it's in, no we're in a weird spot with that one. It's it's really interesting. Speaking of the fans, you know, it's it, long-time fans in, in, in Detroit. A lot, a lot of people have been here for a long time and been through the ups and downs and the whole deal. We had Coach Fonts on earlier talking about as as it, when he was the coach and comparing with, uh, with Dan Campbell, what he sees here. Um, and fans dream and, and, and to kind of talk to themselves a little bit when, when the lions win the super bowl, Oh my God, I'm going to, and then, you know, X, Y, and Z follows you're calling the game, the lions in the super bowl and it comes out and they win on top. Have you ever had that thought about what your reaction oh. might be, how you would react to that? So many times, so many times I have, <laughs> I have called, I have called that moment so many times in my car driving. I have, I have. And it's and I even go back one. I think it's the NFC Championship too. I think it's 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 thinking about that moment when you realize that you're going to the Super Bowl. I think to me that's that's right there with it because then you're taking that next step. But man, I've made that call. I've made notes about it. You know, I, I've made notes about things that I would think about saying. And and I'll be honest with you, I've I've driven down the road and thought about what it would mean to fans and and you get a little bit emotional you really do because and and i don't have any doubt that in that moment i will just because we've all seen so much and been through so much and been the butt of the jokes and been the team that never could get it done that man when it finally happens it's i can't even explain what the emotions are going to be in terms of finally getting there with everybody else and and just the thought of what it would mean to these fans i mean it's yeah it, it'll be that way for me but man every fan and i've told you guys before and i will never change this the best part of my job is seeing fans happy and to think of that moment when they will have realized what this team is doing and has done then i think that that would be just incredible and i i I can't tell you how many times I've done that to myself driving down the road, both Super Bowl and NFC Championship game, and dreamed. And and people might drive by me and look at this idiot screaming in his car, and that's me. Um, Think of all the years of practice. I, if you if you don't dream, then you know probably shouldn't be doing this. We shouldn't be. We all dream. That's why. That's why we love this. We we think about what the ultimate result could be. It's not just about what is. It's about what's possible and i think we all think of that moment and i'm not somebody that believes all oh, they're cursed and they can never do it no you just need to make good decisions play good ball draft good players develop good players and then they have the same chance as everybody else i think about it a lot in the context of the red wings back in 97 um 
it, it was it had been I think it was like forty three years without a without a championship. I was I used to go in the in the late seventies and early eighties. They'd give away a Jeep Wrangler at every single home game because only three thousand people were showing up at Joe Lewis. It was those were dark dark days. <laughs> And to watch them slowly build to this, to the, to what they became, and then the, the near misses, and then the, you know, the President's Cup trophy winners, and then it, they, they lose out in the first round, and, and just the, it was that same sense of like, come on, come on, and when they finally broke yeah. and did that, the city, when, and, and, it, and it's a light, and not in the way you know that negative people think about the city, like a weight was lifted off the shoulders, and and Detroit is a special place, and people are different. I mean, I've lived all around the country. And and there's people. There's a personality of the people in Detroit, and and they all, you know, of course, as a fan, but they almost deserve that victory because of all the times, you know, like you said, the the naysayers and people making fun of it and being kicked when they're down. This is the kind of thing that would. I see L.A. win it last year. They bought it. They've forgotten about it by now. I li- I lived there for a while. I know they've moved on. Who's if nobody's winning, then I'm going to be out hiking. I got plenty of other things to do, and well, I'll, I'll jump on for the moment. Detroit would live and feast on that feeling for years, and it'd be so well deserved, and they would truly appreciate that. Yeah, th- there's no doubt. And and the Red Wings' first Stanley Cup was right before I got here. I got here during the run to the second one in '98, and you know, I think. You know, being there for for that, being there for their subsequent couple of of, of stands, couple more Stanley Cup titles, being there for the Pistons run, but I think probably the 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 outpouring when when the Tigers beat the Yankees in that playoff series, you know, yeah. with the ability to put the 119 lost season behind them, and just the incredible scene at Comerica Park, I just remember how incredible that was, and I think you take that. And honestly, I think you multiply it a little bit. And it's nothing to do with the Tigers. I think it's right. just a longer period of, of frustration. And it's it's all the things that we've talked about. And um, guys, that we I, I've had this conversation before. I don't think there would be anything that would compare to it. And I don't know if there'd be much that would compare to it around the country. Maybe when the Cubs finally won or the Red Sox finally won or something like that. It was it. But um, here... Man, I just think of Hart Plaza and what it would be like and, and the number of fans that would turn out and the sheer joy that they would have to see this team finally do it and what it would mean to so many people. And, um, you know, that's part of it, man. That's part of the satisfaction of doing it. But uh, the legwork and the wins and the figuring it out, that's all That's all what's going on now. But, um, yeah, I, I just we, – we, we're blessed here. And I think to your point, it's it's the shared experience, I think, and the deep roots that people have here. You know, as somebody who grew up in D.C., which is a very transient place, uh, you didn't have as many people that had grown up their whole lives there loving Washington football or, you know, I have a baseball team when I grew up or, or you know, the Bullets or, or the Caps or anything like that. But it didn't mean they didn't love the championships. They did. But here, you know, so many people, this is where they were born. This is where they they rooted for teams with their grandparents and their parents and their dads and their moms and their brothers and their sisters and they're all still here and God willing, you know, many of them are still alive and and it's the generational thing I think that makes Detroit special and and that makes the roots run so deep and I do think it's it's different than a lot of places in that regard in that regard, excuse me, um, and that's one of the reasons that people are as passionate about these teams as they are. Yeah, so I, I would take it that you would happily accept if they asked you to MC a a championship parade or a you know championship gathering. Um, I, I like this. I'm from Cleveland originally. I've been a Cleveland Cavaliers fan my entire life. When they won the title in 2016, is about the only thing that I could compare to what it would be like for the Lions and like like fourth sport there in Cleveland. Like foot football is God, and to do that in Detroit, like. I, I would love to have you, so I'm going to nominate you, Dave, to, to lead the parade and, and lead the the ceremony that, that comes on and, and the, the the millions of people who will be lining the streets for that. I, w- I would do anything I was asked, and uh, I believe me, I've like guys, I've thought of it. I mean, it's just like it would be unbelievable because <laughs> I've you know I've I've sat and watched and, and and looked at other guys who do my job at their parades, and I'm like, man, just one day. Just one day, I want to be able to do that, and I want to be able to, you know, be in right next to the stage when the Red Wings won, and 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 looking out at just that massive of humanity and sports fans and stuff like that. I want to see that 
with people dressed in Honolulu blue and it would just be, it would be incredible. It's just such a, everybody's so happy. Everybody, you know, when you get those situations and like I've, I've been lucky being here, you know, for so many parades and championships and, and what we've been able to do here with the wings and, and the Pistons and the Tigers get close, you know, it's just, uh, one day it'll be the Lions' time. Let's hope it's sooner rather than later. And um, look, I think we all feel like there's a lot of good things happening with this organization right now, but you just got to keep moving forward, keep yep. getting better, keep developing your guys. And then one day you look up and you you are that good. Yep. You don't know when it's going to come. Uh, the windows in this league aren't huge in my mind, and it's the league that gives you the opportunity for the quickest turnaround in any sport in my mind. So just got to, got to keep grinding. And I, I, you guys talk about this all the time and we're seeing some of the fruits of their labor now, but it's, uh, it is any of these guys would tell you, cause, cause a lot of these guys have lived the life. It's, it's just, you know, about every day getting a little bit better. And people think of that as a cliche, but it's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. It's just every day, everybody in that building getting a little bit better. Last question for you, Dan because you give us so much time, but I got to ask you one more. <laughs> 18 years of doing this, you've seen a couple GMs and a whole lot of coaches. Um, how how well do you think this this group compares? Is What's your level of confidence compared to the others that this is the group that can actually get it done for us? Well, I mean, I think to, to Brad Holmes, you have to look at these young players. We're seeing young guys develop, I think, at a clip that we haven't seen before. Never, yeah. I mean, we're seeing guys that Absolutely. are coming here and getting better, and that's – go ahead, Jeff. Just the emphasis on the teaching. Gotta you're be. right. <laughs> it's got. It's got to be. If, if if you're not drafting and developing your players, you have no shot. If your guys don't get here and become a part of your program and become, you know, the guy who steps in next, the guy who steps in next, it's like. You know, I, I go back to Baltimore, I go back to Pittsburgh, the teams that to me have sustained, you know, New England's kind of on their own with Brady and Belichick and stuff like that. But, you know, Baltimore and Pittsburgh, with the way that they develop players and do it year after year, and they don't have huge fall offs for the most part. I mean, you're going to go through it like Pittsburgh's going through it now, but their level of consistency over the years has been unbelievable. It's because they draft well, they develop well, they understand their program. And they do it year after year. And I think that's what the, the Lions are trying to put in place right now is that type of thing. And when you look up and down this depth chart and you see all these young guys getting better, that to me says, OK, they're doing things that we haven't seen other regimes do before. And I think that's vitally important. That's everything. That's where it starts. If you don't have that, we're not even having this conversation because it's meaningless. You can't build your team with free agents. It doesn't work. We know that. You have to draft and develop. And look, you, you can talk about Campbell and some of the decisions that he's made. And I get that. And I think he gets that. He's he's answered some of those questions this year. Um, but this coaching staff is making these players better. And that's important. And as he gets experience, I think some of his decisions will get better. I think you can argue some of his decisions haven't been that bad. The Minnesota one's the one he just – grinds on him it's one play to win a game if he had to do it over he would go for fourth and four and try to get that play and then run out the clock but um look these players love him man he's good for this organization he is good for this city he gets it um are there things he has to refine sure he's a he's a second year head coach so uh he is getting better i think on the job but he checks pretty much every box you would want a coach to check here you got an offensive coordinator who's young in the job as well and looks like he is doing great. You got a defense that has turned things around and playing much better of late. Um, and you're going to be adding a significant amount of talent here in the near future. And some of the young talent that you have is just going to get better. So I love what I see. Am I a little bit biased? Yeah, I am. But I think there's tangible things that you can point to to say, you know what, there's some good things happening and good things might point you in the right direction. I think right now, winning four out of five, going into a big game against Minnesota, does have you point in the right direction. I think Brandy, when you guys were together, he said it best. He said, ah, people accuse us of being homers. Heck yeah, we're homers. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I look, I, I never hide that fact, but I think if you listen on Sunday when something's not right, we'll tell you it's yeah, not right. 100%. But yep. at its core, we want this team to win. And, you know, we're rooting for this team to win. I've, I've never hidden from that at all but i think over 18 years we've also had to break some bad news to folks along the way from play to play or game to game and, and we're willing to do that because i think if you're right and you're fair 
nobody can say anything about it. Yep. Well, I'll tell you, I know, and then we're seeing it in the chat, and there's no one else anybody would want to hear that winning call from than Dan Miller on the from the Lions game, heart and soul, top to bottom. And I'll, I'll tell folks something we've talked about all along. You get that NFL Plus app, you put the radio on, and it's real easy to sync to the TV. I listen to Dan Miller call every Lions game, and I'm in Tampa, so it works out. <laughs> appreciate it. We, we appreciate that greatly. It's, uh, you know, I mean, there's – it's 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 beyond humbling. These fans are unbelievable. And, you know, somebody sent me an email the other day and he said, you know, I, I feel like kindred spirits. I feel like we're brothers. And I said, man, we all are. I am. We're all all of us that have been through the ups and downs with this team and have our hearts set on this team one day, giving us what we want. We, we're all brothers. We're yep. all in this together. So um, these are the best fans in the world, man. And, and to have them you know, react the way they do to our broadcast. We we're blessed. We love doing what we do. And, and I, there's no words that I could ever say to express the gratitude and appreciation that I have to them for the way they've accepted us, treated us, the, the notes that I get and things like that. They're, they're just the absolute best. And man, I just hope one day we all get what we're looking for. And uh, first and foremost, I hope we get something on Sunday. There's nothing better than watching NFL films and hearing your voice, Dan. And and I know you hate it. With, you, you, you hate the flattery, but it's not, it's not empty. It's, 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 it's honest to God. We just talked about this in, in our show earlier this week that, you know, when we watched Megatron or like when I watched Barry growing up, I, I, I knew it was great. I knew it was fun, but it didn't register in my mind that it was a generational talent that I was that I was watching play. And even with Megatron, as I got older, and and, and now that I'm a crusty old whatever, I, I've come to, to to recognize around me, be able to in the moment recognize things that are really really special. And the calls you do, Dan, again, I've lived around the country. Your calls on the game are something very very special at, at a level that. I haven't heard at any other market for other teams and I appreciate what you bring. It means a lot to the fans. When I first reached out, it was a result of I'd moved to California with my family. We knew nobody out there and I'd go out in my garage to mess around for a Sunday afternoon. I'd put the radio on, I'd stream it on the internet and I'd hear you guys and it brought me right back home. It was something that was very, very kind of my, my link back to, to where I came from and my roots. And you, you established that, that role that you have, that voice that you have brings people together and it means a lot. And, and people, from my experience of not recognizing these things, I, I, I hope that they recognize what they have in, in Dan Miller and, and Lomas and everybody calling the game right now because you guys do a spectacular job. I appreciate it, Chris. That, that's kind. And, um, you know, we're I'm blessed to do what I do and I work with, as now people can see, I work with amazing people. So, man, it's, it's, uh, yes, you do. it's, it's fun going to work. And it's even more fun when they're winning and doing what they're doing now. So I just, I just love, you know, hearing today that, that it's standing room only being sold now and yeah. knowing that this place is going to be lit on Sunday and, and looking forward to that. So, you know, 65, 66, 67,000, whatever it ends up being of people in there cheering for the lions is uh that's heaven man i can't wait and I'm, I'm looking forward to it so i appreciate it all right and ask you guys before we go where's the money going here where's uh, how do people donate oh well i'm glad see. you asked first, first in the pro. i can look on the screen and see that <laughs> first we got to say speaking of the minnesota game we've got tickets at the auction auction.detroitlionspodcast.com lions donated two club level seats club folks nice. club level seats plus parking for the minnesota game we have them electronically they're on my phone it could be in your pocket if you win the auction 6 a.m. We're going to pick all, we're going to look at all the winners and announce them. So get in there, auction.detroitlionspodcast.com. A bunch of great stuff, uh, merchandise, signed merchandise, all kinds of good stuff up there. And, and, and this really awesome Campbell and Holmes print. It's a, a 24 inch by 24 inch print in the Calvin and Hobbes style. It's, it's really something special. And then also, stjude.org slash DLP. If you don't want the stuff and you just want to throw a couple bucks uh, towards St. Jude and help the cause, St. Jude dot org slash dlp it'll get in and help uh help sick families sick kids and their families and it doesn't cost them anything it's one of the best organizations out there so thank you all for uh for doing it dan thank you for your time man you've always been so good to us you are a gentleman a scholar and you're damn good at your job <laughs> well you guys are as well i appreciate what you guys do and you guys uh you guys keep the fans engaged all year long and and it's awesome and i appreciate you guys very much so thank you for having me and uh, let's go get this thing on sunday all right go get into that thanks dan thanks dan great job guys appreciate you thanks you too cheers all right dan miller boy what a day star-studded we're, we're
we're not even six hours into this and we've had so many great guests already 